All right, so what we'll be touching on in this video is factorial designs. Now, factorial designs are a type of experiment or study in which you have multiple independent variables. Could be two, could be three, could be four. However, the more you add, the tougher it is to understand the result. Now, where the name factorial comes from is because quasi-independent variables as well as independent variables are also known as factors. So a factorial design it is designed with multiple factors. Now to pull an example from the literature, let's look at Grant et al. from 1998, which essentially demonstrated encoding specificity. So really, the context that you learn something in and then try and recall something in matters. So their first independent variable was the study conditions. Did you study in a quiet environment or in a noisy environment? And then their second independent variable was whether you took a memory test then in a quiet environment or a noisy environment over the material you studied. Now with factorial designs, it's often helpful to diagram them out in little matrix, where on one side you have one independent variable, in this case the test, and on the other side you have the study. And so you can look at the different conditions this creates. Now this particular design can be further called a two by two factorial design, where each of these twos corresponds to an independent variable and the number of levels actually in that independent variable. Now, when we think about factorial designs, they can really show us and let us see two different things, main effects and interactions of our different factors. So main effect is just what is one of our factors, one of our independent variables, doing by itself. An interaction is, as you might guess, how they're interacting. So specifically, when the effects of one of these factors is, depends or is contingent upon the levels of a second factor. Now to start, let's just look at main effects in a little bit more detail. Again, this is just what one variable is doing all by itself. Now, let's work with a simple example. Let's say we're looking at two different treatments. One is a drug treatment. One is a therapy treatment for something like, say, depression. So treatment one, we'll say, is a drug. Treatment two is a therapy, say, cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, let's diagram this out in a little matrix so we can see that we have two levels of each. Yes, they're given the drug. No, they're not given the drug. Yes, they're given the therapy. No, they're not. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to graph out a bunch of hypothetical results. So let's create a little bar graph where the filled in bars will correspond to individuals who are given the drug and the open bars is individuals who weren't given the drug. And then on the x-axis will be the therapy. Yes, they were given it. No, they were not. And on the y-axis will be, say, the treatment efficacy. So if it was just the drug itself doing something, individuals who did the drug and got the therapy did well. However, if you weren't given the drug, you didn't do well. So really we see the drug is doing something, but the therapy isn't. And we can show this on a line graph as well. So again, therapy on the x-axis, and we'll use filled in circles for the drug and open circles for the non-drug condition. So if you're not given the drug, nothing's happening. Given the drug, something's happening and you're higher on the graph. Now, you could have the opposite situation where there's a main effect of the therapy, but not the drug. So what would this look like? Essentially, the therapy is causing an improvement, but the drug is not. So we're keeping the same parameters for the graph, the bars corresponding to the drug, and the x-axis being the therapy. So if you get the therapy, regardless of whether or not you get the drug, you do well. If you don't get the therapy, regardless of whether or not you get the drug, you do poorly. And we can see this on a line graph as well to display these same results. So, again, in this case, what we'll see is essentially it'll look like those both lines are sloping down. If you get the drug or don't get the drug, but you get the therapy, you do well. And if you don't get the therapy, you do poorly. And it's really only the therapy that's moving. Now it is possible to have two independent main effects where both the drug and the therapy are doing something, but they're not interacting. 
okay? So if we were to draw this on a bar graph, what we'd see is essentially, essentially what you would see is, that, hey, if you're doing the drug and the therapy, both of which improve your condition, you do well. And if you only have one of them, you do less well. And if you have neither, you do pretty poorly. Now, this is a lot easier to see on the line graph where you could have the filled in circles for drug condition and no drug being the open circles and therapy on the x axis. So, what we can see here is hey, look, if you have the drug, you do better, but if you don't have the therapy, you don't do as well. So, you can see both of these factors having that effect. Now, interactions. This is when what one variable does depends upon the other variable. So in other words, the effect of one independent variable depends upon the level of the second. This is the classic it depends question. Will this make a difference? Well, it depends on this other thing. So let's actually say Perhaps the drug and the therapy, they only do something if they're both together. So you need the both the drug and the therapy to see any effect. So maybe the drug and the therapy only work when they are both given. So in this case, we'll draw our little bar graph. The drug, the filled bars. The no drug, the unfilled bars. And then therapy on the x-axis. Yes therapy, no therapy. So if you have both the drug and the therapy, we see a large treatment effect. However, if you don't have one of them, you do quite poorly. And you can see this also on the line graph. And the thing to note here is when we graph these lines, they're no longer going to be parallel. And we can see how the effect of one independent variable, in this case the drug with how this is going to be graphed, really seems to depend on whether or not you also got the therapy. And if you got the no drug, nothing's happening. Now, there is another kind of interaction called a crossover interaction. And what you can think of is essentially this will look like a big X on the graph. Okay? where essentially it's as if the effects have been flipped, so to speak. So the example that we gave initially, Grant et al., is a classic crossover interaction. So there were study conditions, quiet or noisy, and test conditions, quiet or noisy. So there's two by two factorial design. Now, let's think about the results that Grant et al. had. Okay, we're going to draw this graph, and we're going to have the testing conditions on the y-axis, quiet and noisy, and then the filled bars will be the quiet study environment, and the unfilled bars will be the noisy study environment. So if you studied somewhere quiet and then took the test quiet, you did really well. Now, if you studied somewhere quiet and then took the test in a noisy environment, you did poorly. Now, interestingly, let's look at what happens in the noisy. So if you studied noisy and took a test in quiet, you did poor. But if you studied noisy and took a test in the noisy environment, you did really, really well. Now, why it's called a crossover interaction is really apparent when you look at a line graph. So again, filled is going to be quiet, unfilled is going to be noisy for the study. And when we draw this out, you need the match between the two, so quiet and quiet, you do well, quiet, noisy, not, quiet and noisy, not, but noisy, noisy, yes. You can see this giant X, this crossover of the independent variable effects. Now, one of the things you'll have to do is identify these main effects and interactions on a graph. Now, what we're going to do is we're essentially going to draw out all of these again. Now, when you're trying to identify main effects, the key thing you want to look for is parallel lines. So if there's only main effects, the lines will be parallel. So let's go ahead and draw three graphs for these multiple situations in a two by two design. So we're gonna have one factor, factor A, 
could be anything, on the x-axis with two levels, and factor B, which is going to be filled and unfilled circles. So if we had a main effect of A, we would see that essentially both the filled and unfilled circles move up together. And note we see these parallel lines. A main effect of B, won't matter what level of A we're at, but you can see the filled and unfilled circles are different, but the lines are still parallel. And if we have a main effect of both variables, the lines are not on top of each other anymore, but they're still parallel. Now, when you see an interaction, the lines are not parallel. So anytime you see unparalleled lines or lines that aren't parallel, there is an interaction of some type. So again, we're going to stick with this factor A and factor B, A on the x-axis, Y or B on the y-axis, with levels 1 and 2 being filled and unfilled. Now, if you have what's called a condensing interaction here, voila, non-parallel lines. You can have a fanning interaction where it's moving the opposite direction. Voila, non-parallel lines. And when you have this crossover interaction, it's very, very apparent the lines are not parallel. In fact, in, you can argue they're perpendicular to each other.